I saw a lot of these amazing auteur films when I was young. In particular, I remember seeing Bergman's Seventh Seal, which was so impressive to me, the whole thing. And when I came out of the cinema, I knew that's what I want to do. I was such an avid guitar player, so wrapped up in the guitar, but it gave me a kind of a lust for this black and white imagery, the power of the film, and especially film visuals combined with music. There was a very powerful thing there. And I, you know, I felt it in, in myself, but at the same time, you know, I was a kid and I was playing the guitar and I wanted to be in a band. So those concerns pretty much overrode everything else. This is a completely mental journey that you go on your whole life. I don't think I've ever had a day basically without a guitar solo running through my head. It's just the way it is. But that interior landscape, that mental landscape of the guitar never leaves the head. It's always something churning away in there. One of the things you're certainly told to do when you're young, at least in my time, was that, you know, you had to get your own voice. What are you trying to say? You know, am I any good? You know, you're supposed to have an original voice. So this was a big thing. I came up with the idea that maybe I could put my own photographs on a guitar. I had never seen that done by anyone. And I approached Fender, the idea sort of caught fire. After all these years of being obsessed with photography and the guitar, I now have the two things together. It was the first time I'd been to the custom shop, and of course it was amazing to walk around and see all this stuff, and these historical instruments and everything. And then became this sort of interrogation about what did I really want with the guitar? I thought I knew a lot about guitars, but man, those guys went into so much detail about, you know, the shape of the neck, the wood, you know, the inlays, the bridge, pickups. I must have tried six or seven different um, pickup combinations before we came to this. Special ceramic pickups. The five-way switch, the Leica camera knobs instead of the normal fender controls the body shape, you know, and I wanted this 54 strap, and I wanted this particular curve on it. And of course, the really incredible thing that they had to pull off was how to get this collage on a guitar. I still don't know how they did it. As you can see, it's all the way around. It's got three springs on the back. And I took all those photographs, so. Apart from being an art piece, it's a great Stratocaster. Well, there are a lot of photographs on here. There's a very personal ones. There's a couple of pictures of Sting and Stuart, just to keep it, you know, in the family. In a way, this is uh, autobiographical, because these pictures span many years. I was fairly well-rounded as a musician. I played a lot of classical guitar, played jazz for years, you know. I mean, I was a pretty good guitar player. <laughs> The irony was that I sort of threw it all out of the window to play punk, which was an odd move, but everything went to a different level. And I think Sting in particular saw the potential and that his songwriting was going to be unleashed with someone like me. The choices I would make on the guitar behind the vocals started to reshape the band. And Sting, with his brilliant ear and his unique voice and his great deep musical talent, was able to go with it. And I think Stuart found his kind of mid-tempo hi-hat grew with it. And suddenly, you know, this sort of magical thing started to happen. It sort of was an amazing combination of personal, interpersonal chemistry, three different styles of playing coming together in a very urgent moment in the UK. And, you know, I feel very grateful to it because it, it had huge energy and it gave us a framework to be together and also, ultimately, to escape from.
I think, you know, in my cinematic viewing of that time, being in black and white just seemed to lend an air of seriousness, authenticity, reality that color didn't give at that point. It's very natural for me, you know, to love it actually. And I mean, I still do. I say photography is black and white. You know, I've been a very lucky guy. I, I you know, I've managed to do all these various things, but I, I worked hard at it. And uh, I've got the point where Leica have actually made me my own camera. It's thrilling for me to get, you know, a guitar designed for me and a camera. It's, it's kind of amazing. This is an inspiring guitar. I love playing it and I love this camera. I love shooting with this monochrome two camera. So for me, they're great tools that I hope inspire creativity. The famous quote, all art aspires to the condition of music, I think it's absolutely true. There's a profound truth to it because visual art, for instance, it becomes music, poetry becomes music, anything beautiful becomes music. Why is that? Because music is certainly the most abstract and probably the greatest art, the greatest expression of humanity that we have. I think ultimately I'm looking for the same thing, like some sort of condition of music, whether it's stark, angular, melodic, or lyrical, emotional, austere, all these things, it can be everything. Music can be all those things and ultimately everything turns into music.